a spider web, spiderweb, spider's web, or cobweb from the archaic word cop, meaning spider is a structure created by a spider out of proteinaceous spider silk extruded from its spinnerets, generally meant to catch its prey. Spider webs have existed for at least 100 million years, as witnessed in a rare find of early Cretaceous amber from Sussex, southern England. Many spiders build webs specifically to catch insects to eat. However, not all spiders catch their prey in webs, and some do not build webs at all. Spider web is typically used to refer to a web that is apparently still in use, i.e., clean, whereas cobweb refers to abandoned, i.e., dusty webs. However, the word cobweb is also used by biologists to describe the tangled three-dimensional web of some spiders of the Theridiidae family. While this large family is known as the cobweb spiders, they actually have a huge range of web architectures. Other names for this spider family include tangle web spiders and comb-footed spiders. Topic: <laughs> Silk production. When spiders moved from the water to the land in the early Devonian period, they started making silk to protect their bodies and their eggs. Spiders gradually started using silk for hunting purposes, first as guide lines and signal lines, then as ground or bush webs, and eventually as the aerial webs that are familiar today. Spiders produce silk from their spinneret glands located at the tip of their abdomen. Each gland produces a thread for a special purpose, for example a trailed safety line, sticky silk for trapping prey or fine silk for wrapping it. Spiders use different gland types to produce different silks, and some spiders are capable of producing up to eight different silks during their lifetime. Most spiders have three pairs of spinnerets, each having its own function. There are also spiders with just one pair and others with as many as four pairs. Webs allow a spider to catch prey without having to expend energy by running it down. Thus it is an efficient method of gathering food. However, constructing the web is in itself an energetically costly process because of the large amount of protein required, in the form of silk. In addition, after a time the silk will lose its stickiness and thus become inefficient at capturing prey. It is common for spiders to eat their own web daily to recoup some of the energy used in spinning. The silk proteins are thus recycled. The tensile strength of spider silk is greater than the same weight of steel and has much greater elasticity. Its microstructure is under investigation for potential applications in industry, including bullet-proof vests and artificial tendons. Researchers have used genetically modified mammals to produce the proteins needed to make this material. <laughs> Types There are a few types of spider webs found in the wild, and many spiders are classified by the webs they weave. Different types of spider webs include Spiral orb webs, associated primarily with the family Araneidae, as well as Tetranithidae and Euloboridae Tangle webs or cobwebs, associated with the family Theridiidae Funnel webs, with associations divided into primitive and modern Tubular webs, which run up the bases of trees or along the ground Sheet web Several different types of silk may be used in web construction, including a sticky capture silk and fluffy capture silk, depending on the type of spider. 
Webs may be in a vertical plane most orb webs, a horizontal plane sheet webs, or at any angle in between. It is hypothesized that these types of aerial webs co-evolved with the evolution of winged insects. As insects are spiders' main prey, it is likely that they would impose strong selectional forces on the foraging behavior of spiders. Most commonly found in the sheet web spider families, some webs will have loose, irregular tangles of silk above them. These tangled obstacle courses serve to disorient and knock down flying insects, making them more vulnerable to being trapped on the web below. They may also help to protect the spider from predators such as birds and wasps. Orb web construction Most orb weavers construct webs in a vertical plane, although there are exceptions, such as Ulliborus diversus, which builds a horizontal web. During the process of making an orb web, the spider will use its own body for measurements. Many webs span gaps between objects which the spider could not cross by crawling. This is done by first producing a fine adhesive thread to drift on a faint breeze across a gap. When it sticks to a surface at the far end, the spider feels the change in the vibration. The spider reels in and tightens the first strand, then carefully walks along it and strengthens it with a second thread. This process is repeated until the thread is strong enough to support the rest of the web. After strengthening the first thread, the spider continues to make a Y-shaped netting. The first three radials of the web are now constructed. More radials are added, making sure that the distance between each radial and the next is small enough to cross. This means that the number of radials in a web directly depends on the size of the spider plus the size of the web. It is common for a web to be about 20 times the size of the spider building it. After the radials are complete, the spider fortifies the center of the web with about five circular threads. It makes a spiral of non-sticky, widely spaced threads to enable it to move easily around its own web during construction, working from the inside outward. Then, beginning from the outside and moving inward, the spider methodically replaces this spiral with a more closely spaced one made of adhesive threads. It uses the initial radiating lines as well as the non-sticky spirals as guide lines. The spaces between each spiral and the next are directly proportional to the distance from the tip of its back legs to its spinners. This is one way the spider uses its own body as a measuring, spacing device. While the sticky spirals are formed, the non-adhesive spirals are removed as there is no need for them anymore. After the spider has completed its web, it chews off the initial three center spiral threads then sits and waits. If the web is broken without any structural damage during the construction, the spider does not make any initial attempts to rectify the problem. The spider, after spinning its web, then waits on or near the web for a prey animal to become trapped. The spider senses the impact and struggle of a prey animal by vibrations transmitted through the web. A spider positioned in the middle of the web makes for a highly visible prey for birds and other predators, even without web decorations. Many day hunting orb web spinners reduce this risk by hiding at the edge of the web with one foot on a signal line from the hub or by appearing to be inedible or unappetizing. Spiders do not usually adhere to their own webs, because they are able to spin both sticky and non-sticky types of silk, and are careful to travel across only non-sticky portions of the web. 
however, they are not immune to their own glue. Some of the strands of the web are sticky, and others are not. For example, if a spider has chosen to wade along the outer edges of its web, it may spin a non-sticky prey or signal line to the web hub to monitor web movement. However, in the course of spinning sticky strands, spiders have to touch these sticky strands. They do this without sticking by using careful movements, dense hairs and nonstick coatings on their feet to prevent adhesion. Uses Some species of spider do not use webs for capturing prey directly, instead pouncing from concealment e trapdoor spiders or running them down in open chase e wolf spiders. The net casting spider balances the two methods of running and web spinning in its feeding habits. This spider weaves a small net which it attaches to its front legs. It then lurks in wait for potential prey and, when such prey arrives, lunges forward to wrap its victim in the net, bite and paralyze it. Hence, this spider expends less energy catching prey than a primitive hunter such as the wolf spider. It also avoids the energy loss of weaving a large orb web. Some spiders manage to use the signaling snare technique of a web without spinning a web at all. Several types of water-dwelling spiders rest their feet on the water's surface in much the same manner as an orb web user. When an insect falls onto the water and is ensnared by surface tension, the spider can detect the vibrations and run out to capture the prey. Topic: Uses by humans. Cobweb paintings, which began during the 16th century in a remote valley of the Austrian Tyrolean Alps, were created on fabrics consisting of layered and wound cobwebs, stretched over cardboard to make a mat, and strengthened by brushing with milk diluted in water. A small brush was then used to apply watercolor to the cobwebs, or custom tools to create engravings. Fewer than a hundred cobweb paintings survive today, most of which are held in private collections. In traditional European medicine, cobwebs were used on wounds and cuts and seem to help healing and reduce bleeding. Spider webs are rich in vitamin K, which can be effective in clotting blood. Webs were used several hundred years ago as gauze pads to stop an injured person's bleeding. Spider web strands have been used for crosshairs or reticles in telescopes. Development of technologies to mass produce spider silk has led to manufacturing of prototype military protection, medical devices, and consumer goods. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Adhesive properties. The stickiness of spiders' webs is courtesy of droplets of glue suspended on the silk threads. This glue is multifunctional, that is, its behavior depends on how quickly something touching it attempts to withdraw. At high velocities, they function as an elastic solid, resembling rubber, at lower velocities, they simply act as a sticky glue. This allows them to retain a grip on attached food particles. The web is electrically conductive which causes the silk threads to spring out to trap their quarry, as flying insects tend to gain a static charge which attracts the silk. <laughs> Communal spider webs Occasionally, a group of spiders may build webs together in the same area. Massive flooding in Pakistan during the 2010 monsoon drove spiders above the waterline, into trees. 
The result was trees covered with spider webs. One such web, reported in 2007 at Lake Tawakani State Park in Texas, measured 200 yards meters across. Entomologists believe it may be the result of social cobweb spiders or of spiders building webs to spread out from one another. There is no consensus on how common this occurrence is. In Brazil, there have been two instances of a phenomenon that became known as raining spiders, communal webs that cover such wide gaps and which strings are so difficult to see that hundreds of spiders seem to be floating in the air. The first occurred in Santo Antonio da Platina, Parana, in 2013, and involved Anelosimus eximius individuals. The second was registered in Espirito Santo do Dourado, Minas Gerais, in January 2019, and involved Parawixia bistriata individuals. Outside influences Administering certain drugs to spiders affects the structure of the webs they build. It has been proposed by some that this could be used as a method of documenting and measuring the toxicity of various substances. Low gravity. It has been observed that being in Earth's orbit has an effect on the structure of spider webs in space. Spider webs were spun in low Earth orbit in 1973 aboard Skylab, involving two female European garden spiders, cross spiders called Arabella and Anita, as part of an experiment on the Skylab 3 mission. The aim of the experiment was to test whether the two spiders would spin webs in space, and, if so, whether these webs would be the same as those that spiders produced on Earth. The experiment was a student project of Judy Miles of Lexington, Massachusetts, after the launch on July 28, 1973, and entering Skylab, the spiders were released by astronaut Owen Garriott into a box that resembled a window frame. The spiders proceeded to construct their web while a camera took photographs and examined the spiders' behavior in a zero gravity environment. Both spiders took a long time to adapt to their weightless existence. However, after a day, Arabella spun the first web in the experimental cage, although it was initially incomplete. The web was completed the following day. The crew members were prompted to expand the initial protocol. They fed and watered the spiders, giving them a house fly. The first web was removed on August 13 to allow the spider to construct a second web. At first, the spider failed to construct a new web. When given more water, it built a second web. This time, it was more elaborate than the first. Both spiders died during the mission, possibly from dehydration. When scientists were given the opportunity to study the webs, they discovered that the space webs were finer than normal Earth webs, and although the patterns of the web were not totally dissimilar, variations were spotted, and there was a definite difference in the characteristics of the web. Additionally, while the webs were finer overall, the space web had variations in thickness in places, some places were slightly thinner, and others slightly thicker. This was unusual, because Earth webs have been observed to have uniform thickness. In popular culture Spider webs play a crucial role in the children's novel Charlotte's Web. Webs are also featured in many other cultural depictions of spiders. In films, illustration, and other visual arts, spider webs may be used to readily suggest a spooky 
atmosphere, or imply neglect or the passage of time. Artificial spider webs are a common element of Halloween decorations. Spider webs are a common image in tattoo art, often symbolizing long periods of time spent in prison, or used simply to fill gaps between other images. Some observers believe that a small spider is depicted on the United States $1 bill, in the upper right corner of the front side obverse, perched on the shield surrounding the number 1. This perception is enhanced by the resemblance of the background image of intertwining fine lines to a stylized spider web. However, other observers believe the figure is an owl. Artificial spider webs are used by the superhero Spider Man to restrain enemies and to make ropes on which to swing between buildings as quick transportation. The World Wide Web is thus named because of its tangled and interlaced structure, said to resemble that of a spider web. The notable tensile strength of spider webs is often exaggerated in science fiction, often as a plot device to justify the presence of artificially giant spiders. See also Filter feeder